All right, battlers, welcome back to a brand new Go Battle League video. These are my first 10 games in the Go Battle League. Let's see if I go 10 and 0 or not. So in this first match, I actually played this in my car, waiting to go into my shift. I had 10 minutes before I had to work and Go Battle League was offline, but it came back right before I went into my shift. So I'm gonna go with the Speedy Trio. I mentioned my video a couple days ago, Bastiodon, Defense Deoxys, and Azumarill. My opponent is gonna be Genevieve 28 now, trainers, in these matches, I'm going to try to point out what I did right, what I did wrong, and what we can learn from them. In this first game, we both opened Bastiodon, so I swap into Defense Deoxys to use those countered counters because I know it'd be super effective against Bastiodon. However, my opponent counter switches into Altaria. So Altaria is a okay coverage option for Defense Deoxys, but that Rock Slide, as you saw, is going to hurt really badly. So we can tank one Sky Attack from Altaria, no need to shield the first one. Here comes another Rock Slide for me, attempting to get the shield from my opponent, and we get it. So we are at a shield advantage at this point. Altaria is actually going to make a mistake here and use the Sky Attack when they could have just used the Dragon Breath and saved that energy for my next Pokemon. So I'm I'm gonna wait down that switch timer, bring in Bastiodon, a fast swap into Azumarill here, and now we're in the Azumarill mirror. We just call it a mirror match when one Azumarill is facing another Azumarill, or it can be a different Pokemon like Bastiodon versus Bastiodon. We open in a Bastiodon mirror, if you will. So in this particular situation, uh, Play Rough is the right move to use, and this is really interesting because I actually have a shield advantage. As you remember, I had two shields, my opponent spent one on the Altaria, so in this matchup, I'm going to win because my opponent can only generate enough energy to get to a few play roughs, and as long as I shield one, I'll be okay. At this point, we actually reach a CMP tie, where we both got to a charge moves at the same time, and they go for the Ice Beam, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So now I know that my opponent's Azumarill has Play Rough and Ice Beam as the moveset. In comes that Bastidon again that we saw in the beginning. I'm actually gonna stay in here with Azumarill and go for the uh, Play Rough, because I don't wanna switch lock myself uh, into a bad situation. In comes Altaria, and I switch into Bastidon. Bastidon's Smackdown is gonna be super effective against Flying-type Altaria, and again here, I'm gonna use my shield uh, to shield that flamethrower from the Bastidon. So in this situation, my opponent actually spends their last shield as well. So now we are both without shields, but look at the health Look at the health difference though. My Bastidon is very well into the green while my opponent is in the yellow. Only a couple more flamethrowers are going to settle this match. So this is actually a very, very close game for my first game in the Go Battle League. A very intense match and I had to be very, very careful of how I made my switches so I didn't put myself at a disadvantage because my opponent could have easily beaten me if they would have done a couple of things differently. So I do fire off the flamethrower here to take down the Bastidon and win that game. GG's. Going to the next game, I'm going to use the Linden Trio. This is Skunk Tank, but with the same two Pokemon, Defense Deoxys and Azumarill in the back. Uh, my next opponent, I love this name, Karn on the Cob 13. Uh, trainers, if you were watching this and you battled me, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to connect with you. I know that Go Battle League matches you with trainers all across the world. I think it's really, really exciting. So my Skunk Tank is actually going to get to the crunch before my opponent uh, gets to their charge move. I'm assuming a big charge move here, something like a Hydro Pump. So I do decide to shield my Skunk Tank. It is just the water pulse though. So I probably could have gone without shielding that, but in these Go Battle League matches, you never know. We are at a shield disadvantage. In comes Lapras, and at this point, trainers, I'm actually not going to switch out of my Skunk Tank because if I switch, my opponent's unable to switch and they could catch me at a uh, really bad uh, situation if I switch in something that they have a counter to. So I'm gonna fire off, uh, try to get to a couple of crunches there, but it doesn't quite work. We are now tied up at shields and my defense Deoxys comes in with full health. So I'm gonna tank this Blizzard from Lapras. Defense Deoxys is very strong. That was a, a water gun Lapras, as you probably noticed. In comes this Arcanine, and Arcanine is a interesting fire type Pokemon. I'm gonna try to drop double rock slides on it, and we actually get to the second rock slide. So fire is weak to rock, and here comes the rock slide, super effective. Uh, my last Pokemon's gonna come in here, Azumarill, and one bubble will win us the game. Going to this match, I'm gonna use the For the Battle Squad. This is Altaria, Charizard, and Zumeral. We're going up against my opponent here, and I open Altaria into Breloom. So Breloom is a grass and fighting type, two types that are weak to flying. In comes Durant, and we make a simultaneous swap. I bring out Charizard, and the fire spans are gonna work down that bug steal Durant so fast. In comes Azumarill, and why not go for the heavy hitting move? I actually go for Blast Burn. So Blast Burn is actually the right move to use here, even though Charizard's a fire type and Azumarill is water because Azumarill is going to resist that Dragon Claw because Azumarill is part fairy. 
At this point, I have two shields and I'm a very comfortable uh, situation. I do bring in my Azumarill here for the mirror match. And the reason for that, trainers, is because Altaria being dragon and flying is weak to ice. And if you remember from the first game, Azumarill can pack an ice beam. My Azumarill actually has ice beam. So I don't want to get hit by ice beam or the play rough because dragon is also weak to fairy. So here we go with a play rough against my opponent working my opponent down into the yellow. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this point. I know my opponent's first Pokemon is still that Breloom, and I do have my Altaria with some energy in the back. So this is an interesting thing about PvP as well. When you store up energy and then you swap, unlike raiding, you actually get to keep your energy. I bring in the Altaria here and we are so close to the Sky Attack, we get it. Sky Attack is gonna one-shot that Breloom and that is GG's. Going to this match, I'm actually going to use Wizap 7 Squad. He recommended Frostlass, Venusaur, and Swampert. Here we go against the Ampharos. So Ampharos is a very interesting Pokemon. It is using Volt Switch, as you can tell by the animation. Since Volt Switch got buffed, it is much, much faster than it used to be. It's actually a clone of another move called Shadow Claw that Ghost types use. So he's gonna fire off the Power Gem, which would have hurt Frostlass really badly. Frostlass is very glassy. It outputs a ton of damage, but it can't take much. So we're gonna go for the shadow ball here against Azumarill and it does get shielded. I'm really hoping to get to another shadow ball here but we lag pretty hard and as you can tell by the animation I think this Azumarill is running rock smash which is a pretty interesting move. You definitely want bubble on your Azumarill because it charges more quickly. In comes my Venusaur. Venusaur is a grass type. Azumarill is water so this is going to go really well for us. My opponent actually decides to stay in and go for the ice beam. So ice beam is a great move that Azumarill has. It offers a lot of coverage because it can hit grass types like Venusaur so hard. We are going to drop that Azumarill. In comes Entei. Entei is an awesome legendary fire type Pokemon. I know that all of its moves are pretty expensive though, so it's not going to get to a charge move very fast. I bring in my Swampert, and Swampert is the opposite. Mudshot charges so quickly. Hydro Cannon takes down the Entei one shot. GG's. Trainers, going into this game, I'm going to leave Poliwrath. I do have my Skarmory and Sableye in the back. We're going up against TW William Chu. In comes Registeel. So this is actually a great matchup for me. That Registeel is steel and fighting is strong against steel. So we're going to throw this dynamic punch at it. And it is super effective. Look at that, trainers. Already so weak. I'm actually going to go for the Ice Punch here. Now, as you notice, that Registeel doesn't have a charge move yet because it's using Rock Smash. You definitely want Lock On as your fast attack on the on the Registeel. In comes this Pokemon here, and I throw a Dynamic Punch at it, and it does get shielded. This is an electric type. I think Manectric, Manectric is that how you say it? Uh, but I throw a uh, Dynamic Punch here against it. And you're actually going to see in this match, trainers, a Polyrath sweep. And this is the this highlights the importance of bringing a flying type in your trio because Polyrath is just so strong. In comes Tauros, and I don't know what a fast attack that is, but it's adding up pretty quickly. I throw one dynamic punch, and Mudshot is so quick to get to another move. We actually throw a last second dynamic punch, and this will KO the Tauros for the win. GG's. I'm actually going to claim some rewards here and kind of show you trainers what's going on. I'm sure you're already familiar, but your first unlock is going to be Snorlax. Snorlax is an awesome Pokemon to use. It is very good in open Great League, Ultra League, and Master League. Uh, the moveset that is recommended by pvpoke.com is Lick, Body Slam, and Earthquake. So when you do decide to double move your Snorlax, it is going to be pretty expensive, but I'll give you a hint. If you can hatch a Munchlax, which is the baby version of Snorlax, you can get that second move for only 10000 Stardust. So, a very, very cool investment. We catch that Snorlax, which is awesome, and we get our five day streak. Uh, Snorlax is pretty good. High defense on that one, which is pretty awesome. A couple of Magikarps at the house. Going into the next game here, I claim my reward. I rank up to rank two, which is very exciting, trainers. 2,500 Stardust, and here we go with some more matches. We're gonna go in with that same team here, a Polyrath, Skarmory, and Sableye. So right now, trainers, we are undefeated. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna to decide to leave my Polyrath, and out comes Gliscor. Gliscor is an interesting Pokemon. This one is running Wing Attack. As you can tell, my health is ticking down pretty quickly. I do go for the Ice Punch, though, because Gliscor, being a ground and flying type, is actually very, very weak to ice. So Polyrath has some great coverage. I do recommend Mudshot 
Ice Punch, and Dynamic Punch as the moveset. If you're running Polyrath, as you can tell, they're super effective damage. I'm actually going to swap to catch this Charge Move Trainer. So uh, what you do there is you try to time your opponent and see when they're going to release their charge attack and then swap into something that is going to resist that attack so that you can save yourself the energy and the health. So I do farm up the rest of that Glide Score. Out comes Azumarill. I'm actually going to go straight for the Flash Cannon. So Azumarill being part fairy is going to be weak to Flash Cannon, but my opponent does shield it. As you can see as well, my opponent is out of shield. So Skarmory is actually, uh, I'm actually going to give it a shield here and keep it around for a little while longer. I really want to land this Flash Cannon on Azumarill to see how much damage it does. And it is pretty effective. We do bring that Azumarill down into the yellow. And then my opponent makes a very nice switch here to absorb my Dynamic Punch. If that were an Ice Punch, it would hurt more. We're actually going to get to the Ice Punch as well. But just like I swapped to absorb that attack with my Skarmory, my opponent swaps to absorb the attack with Ivysaur. Again here, trainers, it's important to remember uh, how many moves it takes for your opponent to reach a charge move because my opponent could have just farmed down uh, the rest of my Polyrath. And when I say farm down, what I mean is you keep using your fast attacks to build energy and you take down your opponent that way instead of using a charge move. So that way you have a lot of energy for your opponent in the back. As you can tell, we survived that Hydro Pump and then we Shadow Claw down the Azumarill. Going to the next game, I'm bringing back the Linden Squad. Uh, we have we have our Skunk Tank, Defense Deoxys, and Azumarill going into this match. My opponent this time is actually going to be Sean 920529. So Sean is going to decide to leave with his Sunny Cast form. This is an interesting match matchup, not one that I practice very much. I do swap out here to absorb this weather ball from the sunny cast form. And as you can tell, Azumarill takes out like a champ. A couple of bubbles and out comes Breloom. So Breloom is a grass and fighting type that we saw earlier. Ice is super effective against grass, so we're able to one-shot Breloom. Out comes Empoleon. Empoleon is an interesting Pokemon, especially since it gained that Community Day Hydro Cannon move. Azumarill is just one of the best Pokemon in the game. As you can tell, I really tanked that Hydro Cannon well. I'm actually going to go for the Ice Beam here. And trainers, I'm going to be honest, in this match, I didn't really know what type of move to use. I know that uh, Fairy is, I guess, weak to, or I guess, Steel resists Fairy. So I wasn't sure what to go with. But I wait down the Switch Timer. Out comes Defense Deoxys. And I know Counter is good against Steel. So we're actually able to fire off a few counters here. I'm going to tank another Hydro Cannon from Empoleon. We <laughs> survived it but get taken down by the waterfall in comes azumarill with the bubbles i've got two shields though trainers and out comes sunny cast form i'm actually going to push for the ice beam here i could have gone for the play rough and that was a mistake on my part my last pokemon is skunk tank with two shields so i'm very comfortable here i fire off the crunch and we bring down sunny cast form GG's trainers, going back to the speedy squad. Here we go with Bastiodon, Defense Deoxys, and Azumarill. My opponent is Poor Lord. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it. P O ear lord uh, but i lead that bassidon into dust noir dust noir is a very interesting pokemon and at this point trainers i couldn't remember if dust noir was packing focus blast or not so my opponent's actually going to get to a charge move and i take the risk it's just the ominous win so again bassidon is just such a beast it can tank so many things like i said in my video a couple days ago if it's not a ground type or a fighting type bassidon is in good shape trainers another ominous win comes in and we're actually able to smack down that Dust Noir. My opponent is going to decide to bring in the Alolan Ninetales. So Alolan Ninetales is a fairy and ice type. I know that Flamethrower is going to be good against ice type Alolan Ninetales and those smackdowns are adding up as well trainers. So this Alolan Ninetales is not running Charm. It does fire up that Psy Shock, and again, no need to shield with Bastiodon. Bastiodon is such a monster. It can tank so much punishment. We're actually able to almost smack down my opponent. I'm actually going to shield up my Bastiodon and see how far this will go. My opponent is out of shields, and out comes Obama Snow. I'm trying to push here for the Flamethrower, but those Razor Leafs uh, don't treat us very well. Uh, Bastiodon is part rock, so the Razor Leaf is going to add up. I do fire off a Rock Side here against Obama Snow to bring it down. GG's. Going to this game, I decide to lead with Swampert. I do have Meganium and Bronzong in the back. So far, we are undefeated trainers. If you want to see if we are undefeated by the end of the video, stay tuned. Here comes Hitmontop, a very, a very highly rated Pokemon on pvpoke.com. We do hit it with a Hydro Cannon and then swap perfectly into Bronzong to absorb this close combat. Confusion is going to be super effective. And after that defense uh, debuff, we actually take it down with one attack. In comes Trash Wormadam, and I don't really have a 
solid answer for this Pokemon trainers. I'm going to be serious. Uh, I'm going to be honest. At this point in the match, I was a little bit concerned. I do decide to bring in my uh, Swampert here. And I know I have to shield whatever comes from this Trash Wormadam. Trash Wormadam is an awesome Pokemon in the Rose Cup. Trainers, if you're enjoying Go Battle League and you want to get more into PvP, I highly recommend you check out the Sylph Arena. The Sylph Arena creates monthly cups that are themed based on typings, colors, species, and then uh, what happens is you go to a uh, location like for example, in Tampa, we play at Next Ridge Games and you meet a bunch of other trainers and then you battle each other out with teams that you've built beforehand and you try to win the cup and improve your ranking and it's just a lot of fun. Here comes Meganium with the Earthquake against the Wigglytuff. We actually are able to take down Wigglytuff with Earthquake and we win that game as well. Going to this game, I decided to lead Lapras. I do have Umbreon and Venusaur in the back. So. A lot of the comments I saw from my previous video were, what do you do when you face a Zoomerl? Do you bring a grass type? Do you rely on the mirror? What are the, some good counters? So I actually bring Venusaur this time to try to test that out. So this Deoxys is not defense form, that's actually speed form, and as you can tell, it's very, very weak. Ice shards were taking huge chunks out of it. In comes Kangaskhan, and I go for the Surf. I'm actually going to go for another Surf here with Lapras. And I know Kangaskhan has access to Power Up Punch. I'm actually going to swap here into Venusaur. So we already took both of the shields from my opponent, and Venusaur charges so fast. Community Day Move Frenzy Plan is going to one-shot Kangaskhan. Out comes Lapras, and we are in good shape, trainers. This Lapras, as you can tell by the animation, is running Frost Breath. In an earlier game, we saw a Water Gun Lapras. This is Frost Breath. We actually take down that defense, or the, excuse me, that Deoxys really quickly and claim our rewards. But as I was saying, trainers, some moves are preferred. For Lapras, Ice Shard is actually the best energy generating move that you can get. It is a legacy move that you can only get from the Lapras Raid Day or a special research task. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're going to claim our Stardust here. And then here we go, the Holy Grail, the Charge TM. So excited to get these Charge TMs. And trainers, if you're excited for the Elite TMs that are in the code that might be dropping any day now, leave me a like and let me know down in the comments how happy you are to see a TM rework. Trainers, we went 10-0 and in our first Go Battle League matches. I had so much fun. I'm playing as much as I can. And I actually need to walk five kilometers to get my next set of matches. So I'm going to do that right now. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like. Comment down below what you thought. Let me know if you're enjoying Go Battle League and check out the Sylph Arena and then subscribe to see more.